and welcome back my dear students once again to your youtube channel in today's video we shall be continuing with your julius caesar act 2 scene 1 part 2 if you have watched my previous video you will know that we had begun act 2 scene 1 and we had stopped at line number 69 so we'll begin with line number 70 that is on page 25 Act 2, Scene 1. Okay, and I'm following this edition of Julius Caesar. So, without further ado, let's get started. But, before I begin, let me remind you that if you have been watching my videos for some time and it is helping you to, you know, get better marks in your exams, do not forget to give me a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It shall keep me motivated all right so without further ado let's get started uh, we had stopped at line number 69 where brutus had been in a soliloquy and he's been saying this between the acting of a dreadful thing and the first motion all the interim is like a phantasma or a hideous dream the genius and the moral instruments are then in council, and the state of man, like to a little kingdom, suffers then the nature of an insurrection. So you see here, Brutus is caught in the dilemma to do or not to do. Because, you see, he has already made up his mind to murder Caesar. However, he admits this in this soliloquy that when the plan was first, uh, you know, plot uh, done and now when it is supposed to be executed, the interim period in between is very, very atrocious because a lot of thing, a lot of ideas come into the mind and it keeps troubling. So right at the beginning of this scene, you remember Brutus had been taking walk in his orchard. He'd been unable to sleep at the dead of the night. It is because of this his mind is constantly troubled. Okay. At this point of time enters Lucius. Why had Lucius gone out? Because somebody was knocking at the door and Brutus had asked him to go and find out who it is. So Lucius enters. Sir, it's your brother Cassius at the door who doth desire to see you. Uh, brother as in here brother-in-law okay Cassius, Cassius had married Brutus's sister Marcus Brutus's sister's name was Junia and Cassius had ma married him okay so by that his he is related to Brutus he is the brother-in-law of Brutus so it is Cassius at the door who wishes to meet you Brutus is he alone has he come alone no, sir, there are more with him. Do you know them? No, sir, their hats are plucked about their ears and half their faces buried in their cloaks that by no means I may discover them. So Lucius says, no, I am unable to find out or rather make out who all have come because they are wearing hats because it is extremely cold. So they need to put on their hats which are covering up Till their years and also they are wearing long cloaks long coats okay and the collar is lifted so the remaining part of their face is covered as it is their hats are covering till almost their eyelids and the remaining part is being covered by the collar of the you know the cloak so the titanic part of their face is hidden so I am unable to make out by any mark of favor. So no feature of them is visible. So I am unable to make out who all have come. Brutus, let them enter. Brutus knows who all have come. They are the faction. They are the group. O oh, conspiracy, shamest thou to show thy dangerous brow by night when evils are most free. Oh, then by day, where wilt thou find a cavern dark enough to mask thy monstrous visage? This is a rhetorical question he is asking. 
he's personifying conspiracy and saying oh conspiracy are you ashamed shame is thou to show thy dangerous brow by night so are you ashamed to show your face in the dark at night when evils are supposed to be running free oh then by day where will you find a cavern dog cavern is a cave so if at night you are ashamed of revealing your face when it is dark what will you do where or rather where will you find a help cave which is extremely dark in the broad daylight in other words you will the, the very effort that you are putting up to hide things is futile seek non conspiracy hide it in smiles and affability so the very effort that you are trying to put in to hide things up is futile rather what should you do hide it in smiles and affability that is look innocent put on a bright smile so that nobody gets to know what is going on in your mind this reminds me of lady macbeth from macbeth those of you who've done your macbeth in tales of shakespeare in class 8 will know or will rather remember how lady macbeth had purpose uh, repeatedly told macbeth to put on you know a calm face when duncan was to be murdered so that nobody would sus uh, make get suspicious of them so the theme of appearance versus reality is brought out here where lady may where uh, you know brutus is asking the conspirators to put on a smiling face so that nobody gets to know what is going on in their mind for thou path thy native semblance on not erebus itself were deem enough to hide thee from prevention erebus is your hell at this point of time enters the conspirators and who all are the conspirators cassius casca decius decius brutus that is cinna metellus simba and trebonius now decius brutus and marcus brutus are two different characters please do not get them mixed up in your exams marcus brutus is the brutus who is one of the central characters and decius brutus is one of the conspirators okay so who all are there in the conspiracy you all have you will have to remember this because uh, you can get an mcq like who among the following was not a part of the conspiracy and then the names will follow so it is highly important for you to remember the names who all were there in the conspiracy all right cassius i think we are too bold upon your rest good morrow brutus do we trouble you so we've been too bold to come at such a dead of the night okay did we trouble you brutus and he's wishing him good morrow because it is way past 12 brutus i have been up this hour awake all night so the entire night i was awake no i these men that come along with you do i know the people who have come along with you because brutus is also unable to make out who all have come yes every man of them and no man here but honors you and every one that wish you had but that opinion of yourself which every noble roman bears of you this is trebonius so he is you know saying trying to again flame up brutus spirits by saying yes you know all of them and all of them bear or you know hold very high esteem of you okay why because they know of your capability and then the first one he is introducing is trebonius he is welcome here this decius brutus he is welcome to this casca this cinna and this metellus simba so one by one he is introducing all of them brutus they are all welcome but what watchful cares to interpose themselves betwixt your eyes and night so what is it that have kept you awake all through the night why are you all, all awake cassius shall i entreat a word so cassius request him to come aside because he wishes to speak separately brutus and cassius whisper 
Decius. So while Brutus and Cassius are talking somewhere else, a little away from the place, Decius engages in a conversation. Decius, here lies the waste, east. Does not the day break here? So this position, this part is the east. Does not the sun rise from here? Casca, no. Casca is a blunt fellow. He says no. But we all know, yes, the sun rises from there. Sinna, oh, pardon, sir, it doth, and yon grey lines that fret the clouds are messengers of the day. Oh, of course it does. But then you see those grey lines, they're indicative of the start of the day. You shall confess. You shall confess that you are both deceived. Here as I point my sword, the sun rises. Casca, I just told you he's a blunt fellow, but see, he is slowly growing. He's slowly maturing. What he's saying is, I beg to disagree with y'all. And he points his sword towards the Capitol and says, the sun rises from there. Why? Because it is in the Capitol Caesar is going to be murdered. And what have the conspirators always been telling? That Caesar is a tyrant. So with Caesar's death will come a new beginning, a new day, a new era in Rome. All right. So Casca is pointing his sword towards the capital and saying the sun rises from there. In other words, with Caesar's death in the capital will begin a new day for Rome. So he is maturing as an individual. He is using the metaphor, which is a great way growing on the south Weighing the youthful season of the year, since two months hence up higher toward the north, he first presents his fire and the high east stands as the capital directly here. But you see, he does not tell that I'm telling this because I'm going to murder Caesar there. He knows it is dangerous to discuss such things in the open. So what does he say? Yes, the sun rises from there. From the capital and how can I tell this because from your lessons of geography we know that the sun travels down the south with the rotation of the earth and so and slowly slowly the sun rays come falling in from the direction of the capital so he's trying to be smart yes Give me your hands all over, one by one. So Brutus and Cassius have had their words separately and they now seek each other's hand. And let us swear our resolution. And so they want to take an oath. But Brutus said, no, not an oath. No, we are not going to take an oath. If not the face of men, the sufferings of our souls, the times of use, if these be motives we break off be times. And every man hence to his idol bed. So if our suffering is not a logic or not a reason strong enough to rise up against Caesar, then let all man go. Let all everybody go away and go off to bed. Let them sleep. Okay. Because he's saying we do not wish to take an oath. We are Romans by birth and people know that if we are giving a word, it is a promise that we are going to keep. So there's no need to take an oath because we all know how much suffering we are facing. So let high-sighted tyranny range on till each man drop by lottery. So if the reason is not strong enough and if we need to take an oath, then let all men go wait till, you know, Caesar's tyranny come and come, claim our lives. To kindle cowards and to steal with valor the melting spirits of women, then countrymen, what need we any spur but our own cause to prick our redress? So do what reason do we need apart from our own suffering? to rise up against Caesar. 
What are the bond and secret Romans that have spoke the word and will not falter? And what are the oath than honesty to honesty engage that this shall be or we will fall for it? So, honesty should beget honesty. If we are trying to be honest to our cause, then others will also have, those of you who have joined hands will also have to, you know, agree to what we are doing. And then he says why he is not going to take the oath. Because oath is usually taken by people who are priests and cowards and main forty years. Because priests also sometimes lie. You know, they give us half-truths. To earn money. Cowards also to dismiss their fears. They tell us wrong things. And of course there are men who keep deceiving others by telling uh, false things. They are the people who need to take an oath. And apart from that old feeble carrions and such suffering souls that welcome wrongs unto bad causes swear. Such creatures as men doubt but do not strain. The even virtue of our enterprise, not the insuppressive metal of our spirits. Apart from the priests, apart from the men cotillias and the cowards, there are these old feeble men who are not, you know, better than dead bodies. Very old men, they need to take an oath because they keep forgetting things. And apart from that, people who are so, uh, you know, uh, lacking spirit who entertain and give indulgence to a lot of wrong things. So these are the category of people who need to take an oath and people like Brutus, Cassius um, uh, and others need not take an oath because they are going to be you know very bold and resolute in their work. To think that or our cause or our performance did need an oath when every drop of blood that every Roman bears and nobly bears is guilty of a several bastardy. So as long as the drops of blood in our body are Romans, none of us are going to become bastardy. Who, who is a bastard? A bastard is a person who is not the son of his own father, biological father. All right. So, in other words, Brutus is saying, none of us are going to be bastards because we are the sons of our own father. That is the Roman land. And we have the Roman blood in us, so we are not going to be betray. If he do break the smallest particle of any promise that had passed from him. So, no Roman who had so sown will go against his promise, Cassius. But what of Cicero? Shall we sound him? I think he will stand very strong with us. So Cassius is saying, should we include Cicero in our plan? Remember Cicero, that uh, character with ferret eyes. Casca, let us not leave him out. No, we should not uh, leave him. We should consider him in our team. Sina, no by no means. Sina is saying, oh, no, no, we should not consider him. Metallus, oh, let us have him for his silver hairs will purchase us good opinion. No, we should take him because he's senior and silver hair is, you know, gray hair, which is a mark of experience. So, big pe general people of Rome will believe because a senior person is there in the conspiracy team, they must have done something correct. We'll buy men's voices to commend our deeds and people will support us. It shall be said his judgment ruled our hands. We were guided by his experience. Our youth and wildness, wildness shall no whit appear but be buried in his gravity. So we will all be able to grow under his wisdom. Brutus, oh, name him not. All of them are willing, but Brutus says, no, we will not take him in. Let us not break with him, for he will never follow anything that other men begin. He is not the sort of a person who is a follower. If he is starting something, he will involve others in it. But he is not the sort of a person 
who is going to follow or take instructions from others. So we should not make him a part of the plan. Then leave him out. Casca. Indeed, he is not fit. So the moment Brutus says no, everybody agrees that Metellus, um, uh, this uh, Cicero should not be a part of the conspiracy. Decius. Shall no man else be touched but only Caesar? Will only Caesar be murdered and no one else? Decius, well urged, well asked. I think it is not meet. Mark Antony, so well beloved of Caesar, should outlive Caesar. So Cassius is a practical man. He says we should consider killing Mark Antony also because he so much loves Caesar that sooner or later he might become a threat to us. We shall find of him a shrewd contriver and you know his means if he improve them may well stretch so far as to annoy us all. So he is a great politician and he can, you know, cause a lot of trouble to us. This is what Cassius is saying. Which to prevent, let Antony and Caesar fall together. And he says, that is why to prevent such mishappenings, let us kill Caesar and Antony together. So we'll stop here for the day. Scene. The scene is pretty long so I have decided to break the scene up into several videos because I know it is very difficult to retain your attention for a long time and as it is the scene is over 200, 300 lines so I will go a bit slow with the scene. But not to worry the next parts will be uploaded very soon. We've already completed 160 lines. 161 onwards, I will make a video very soon and post it. Till then, I wish you all the best. Take very get good care of your health. And please do not forget to give me a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay? Also, do not forget to share it with your friends who might be benefited from the explanation. Alright, see you in the next video very soon. Till then, take very good care of your health and goodbye.